Uh, it's awful weather today, but we outdoor cameras have a special trick up our sleeves. It's the perfect day to get edits done on our photos. So this is the dark corner of indoor where I edit my photos and uh, more recently also YouTube videos. Uh, I'm just wrapping up a 12 episode series that features photography experiences all around flyover country. And I decided what was lacking was a sort of a cohesive thread through the episodes. So I thought we should spend some time walking through the whole process of making a photo together from start to finish uh, throughout the series. Uh, so in a future video, We'll edit this photo together, but for now let's catch up on how this sunset image was made. While I made the image on location, I recorded a tutorial emphasizing two sunset photo basics, uh, giving yourself plenty of time on location to prepare for this like fast paced evolution, uh, but also taking the multiple different exposures that are gonna help me uh, now to make this raw capture into this. So if you wanna try out these techniques on your own over the next few weeks, subscribe to the channel and we can get back together to work on digital processing and presentation uh, later in the series. I'm pretty sure this shot's gonna look like a talking mouth, but that's how I feel right now, so we'll go with it. So I'm recording this segment in the car for a reason. That's because my number one tip has everything to do with when you get on location for your sunset photography shoot. The whole sunset evolution takes about an hour for the color to transfer from one part of the sky to the other until the sun's below the horizon and sometimes can go on for up to a half an hour afterwards. So when you consider that the surface of the earth is spinning at like 8,000 miles per hour just to put on this epic show for you, I think it's worth making a little time to appreciate that. And the best way to make sure you do the best service to that image is gonna be showing up at least an hour early. So you can make evaluative judgments about where the sun's setting in relation to the objects in your scene. What was I saying? Oh yeah, so we're gonna be on location at least 45 minutes early. Hey Siri, how fast does the surface of the Earth rotate? Uh, yeah, so exactly like I said, the surface of the Earth is rotating about a thousand miles per hour and well on track to get to the sunset at least 30 minutes early. Definitely poised to be 15 minutes early for sure. Now I'm just looking for an appropriate area where I can pull over. So like I said, we'll arrive after sunset. Just kidding, rewind. This little woods might do, we'll see. This will probably work for me, let's check it out. So I'm out here exploring around the uh, river bottoms of the Ohio River in Northern Kentucky. It's a good little place for privacy and access and uh, not too bad for scenery either. Yeah, I think this scene will work for my purpose. Uh, it's a very simple scene, just a uh, little creek going back into a small woods and lots of light coming in from the back side of the woods because there's a big clearing behind the trees. If you're paying attention to this shot, uh, you'll notice that one of the main problems that we'll constantly run into with sunset photography is a blowout of the highlight areas. In other words, the highlights are going to bright white. Um, and if I open and shut the aperture, you can see how the sun becomes more and less clear as I make the image brighter and darker. We'll talk more about that as I set up the shot, but for right now I'm going to get my equipment set up and move into the tutorial. Notice that even though this shot is so dark you can barely see what's going on, the center of the sun is still white. Brightening the shot to reveal the landscape whitens the sun even more and completely washes out the color of the sky. This is a technical limitation of both cameras and light emitting displays generally, and to overcome it I'll need to take light and dark exposures and combine them on the computer to render an image that more closely simulates the experience of photoreceptive eyesight. I'm set up with my 24 to 70 millimeter lens at 24 millimeters, a fairly uh, tight aperture. We'll talk a little bit about sun stars and what sort of exposure settings are necessary to capture all the detail in a high dynamic range scene like this as I walk you through the operation on the camera. I started this image at f16, both for a broad depth of field, but also to demonstrate this nice sun star effect you'll get at those tighter apertures. It's a little outside my style to include the actual sun in the photo, and recomposing the scene to exclude it would have eliminated some technical headaches for sure. But when I do include it, especially in forested scenes, I think it's nice to feature this sun star intruding through the breaks in the trees, especially in winter scenes like this, where there are lots of gaps in the foliage. 
That meant I was continuously repositioning my tripod to keep the sun in the right spot, and that all my exposure variations were controlled with the shutter speed, which I normally recommend for still landscape shots like this anyway. The Sun Star is looking quite nice on the screen. Um, and also, we're getting some cool opportunities to backlight some of the limbs that are coming off the sides of the trees as they work down the stream. Um, all right, so it's uh, time to take the shot now. And you see a, a good dark exposure is allowing us to capture a good detail in the sun. And then uh, the camera's meeting for, metering for this exposure, which uh, is capturing some detail in the sun, but also causing the sky to go completely white. And then a very bright exposure like this. My camera is telling me this is a two and a third stops overexposed. So, um, but as you can see, it's it's lit the foreground really well. So, what I'm actually going to do is take the image at all three of those different exposures. That's going to make sure that I've got adequate data when I work with these files later in the computer. Okay, I think I should jump in here really quick and clarify a couple things that I didn't really spell out on scene. Uh, I do recommend using the RAW image quality setting as opposed to the JPEG or use the RAW and JPEG setting, but make sure you at least have a RAW file capture for each exposure. And then the last thing would be, if you go to research uh, typical HDR photos like sunsets, uh, you'll probably find the term ex uh, auto exposure bracketing or exposure bracketing used, and that is a really helpful technique. I don't use it in the video, when I work on a tripod with my camera, it's just easier for me to manually flip the um, flip the shutter dial instead of setting up an auto bracket. But if you're shooting handheld, it is really helpful to set up an auto exposure bracket that will fire off those three different exposures uh, instantaneously when you press down the shutter button. Um, so this tutorial is not intended to be like a camera operation level uh, tutorial, but if you are interested in learning how to make this process a little easier or faster for certain cameras, um, it's something you can look into your camera manual to see how to set up. Okay, let's wrap this up back on the video. At F16, I've got an exposure at a 50th of a second, a 13th of a second, which is like the median exposure that I'll use. The camera is also telling me that that exposure is too dark, but uh, we'll see later why uh, having a an underexposed image as the median image will be uh, will be helpful. And then one more in a quarter of a second. If you've never used the histogram, it's our best friend for an image like this. It's telling us the luminance values for the data that the sensor is seeing and capturing. So this histogram is telling me basically that the camera is capturing all the information. If I overexpose the image, you'll see that a bunch of data is getting bunched up here on the right side and clipping. That's all this white in the sky. So all that, what was a colorful sky back there has just turned into all these white pixels. The same thing will happen if I underexpose the image. You see that uh, it's now it's clipping all these blacks and all this detail that was here is just gonna be black when we look at it on the computer. A good rule of thumb is to try to achieve a median exposure like this that doesn't clip any information out of the highlights. And then I actually like to bring the highlights down a little bit further to make absolutely sure that that information is retained and can be played with later in Photoshop. Okay, I'm so happy with what we caught today. I only intended to capture a simple image of the sun and instead we made a nice scenic photo. Uh, stay tuned to the channel. You'll watch me take the image from the process of the capture we made together today uh, through that interpretive uh, digital process on the computer and maybe beyond. Also, there's some big things coming up on the channel as I alluded to, including finally you're going to see the conclusion of that cliffhanger uh, Opt Outside Friday that I recorded in the Hoosier National Forest. And then I've got a video coming out from Indiana Dunes National Park. That's a subject of great curiosity to those of us who live here in southern Indiana. I totally explore the park in a video, take some awesome images. You're definitely going to want to see that as well. So if you subscribe to the channel, you won't miss it. All right, I'll catch you guys later. Bye. Okay, I hope you found that couple of tips helpful. Uh, like I said, I've been a really busy bee on this YouTube thing. Just making these videos has just been a fun way for me to fill in some free time. It's not really of any expense to me. If you'd like to support it, it would be great if you just subscribe to the channel. You'll get uh, a notification of the new content as it becomes released. When I started my YouTube channel a couple years ago, I had always wanted to move it in the direction of being something that provides its own value as opposed to what it's been, which is um, sort of a place where I've been dumping old videos and advertisements uh, for the last couple years. But I called it Flower Photography hoping that one day I would get to use it as a platform to sort of spread the message that uh, outdoor photography 
is and can be an enjoyable activity no matter where you live, even right here in Flyover Country. So the videos I've made are just sort of the process of me proving out that thesis uh, just by doing the work of, of uh, making photographs out in common locations. So these videos may or may not necessarily be something for you or to inspire you, but I do think they'll find an audience to inspire a few people here and there to get out and appreciate you know, our little place in the world with photography. All right, I'll catch you guys later, bye.